Daniel Warren Johnson and Juan Gideon reimagine the DC Universe as a prehistoric Earth that sees the rise of various heroes who protect the people from monstrous beings in the service of the Dark Embryo. Daniel Warren Johnson and Juan Gideon deliver an insanely fun and creative Elseworld story of a prehistoric set Justice League and not only that, a world where all of the heroes are dinosaurs. For a first issue it does a great job introducing four versions of these characters without going too deep into their origins since they are literally the exact same as the main universe counterparts, the big difference just being that they're dinosaurs. Daniel and Juan also give us some really fun callbacks to great DC books of old like The Dark Knight Returns, especially during the Batwalker Jokerzard fight where the villain gets an eyeful of the Batarang which is very much like how Joker ends up getting his eye taken out in that book. The hints at a larger story seemingly involving maybe this world's version of Darkseid, tentatively called the Dark Embryo, sounds like a lot of fun and I can't wait to see what other heroes and villains appear throughout the six issue series. Juan Gideon also provides the artwork for the book and has some really cool designs for the heroes and villains. I thoroughly enjoyed how colourful everything was thanks to Mike Spice's great and creative use of shadows and solid colours and panelling, especially during the brutal and fitting savage fight scenes. The Jurassic League issue 1 was an insanely fun new Elseworlds tale, setting up some of our dinosaur heroes, their villains, and teasing out a larger threat that will no doubt bring the heroes together as the Jurassic League. I'm going to give this issue a 10 out of 10. The Jurassic League issue 1 sees a rocket speed into the atmosphere of Earth, a crash landing in a clearing where it is found by two cavemen who watch as the small blue egg hatches as a voice of the father of the alien child knows his heart breaks as he sends his child into the unknown since he has such little hope but he chooses to believe that there is some love in other places, hoping his son will find it and spread it more. Years later on the outskirts of Grautham City, Batwalker follows a trail through the jungles and fields and towards a volcano, knowing that he is hunting a thing that kills for pleasure and something that has been disturbing the peace for weeks now. He tracks the being to a cave, entering the dark abyss and finding many bones, all arranged to be trophies. He finds the skulls of humans as the carnage all leads him to a giant tree-like structure filled with the bodies of the humans. Bats wonders what evil could do this as a laugh fills the cavern as Jokerzard appears, telling Batwalker that the tiny treasures he sees were used for the purest intentions and they are all part of a beautiful canvas to bring about a glorious new dawn. Jokerzard attacks, biting Batwalker on the neck before the hero kicks the freak off of him, getting a batarang out and throwing it at the villain, hitting him in the eye. Batwalker suplexes the blinded villain into the hard stone floor, telling him that he knows his scent but can't figure out where from. Jokerzard thinks that he knows how, spitting acid onto the hero and burning his shoulder as he darts forward, plunging his hand into Batwalker's stomach. Bats can feel his body shutting down as he spots a human child amongst the bodies of his dead parents. The scent and scene of Jokerzard makes the hero remember how Jokerzard was the one who murdered his parents. The rage and anger that comes over him allows Batwalker to rip the villain's hand from his chest, smashing him in the face before jumping on Jokerzard, tearing him apart until he is nothing but a mangled, barely breathing body. Batwalker tells the human child to get out since he cannot help him, but as he returns to finish off the Jokerzard, he finds the villain is gone. Batwalker decides with his target gone, he must now burn the tree, setting it aflame as he intends on continuing his hunt. The hero spots the child again, screaming at it to leave, but the child doesn't leave, prompting Batwalker to take him with him as he leaves the cave. Elsewhere, fishermen are attacked by Black Mantasaurus, who proclaims he owns the waves and the humans must worship him. He throws a giant net over some of them, capturing them as a child is led away to safety by his mother. The child knows not to worry as the savior of the waves is coming as Aquasaurus arrives along with a cadre of sea monsters who attack Black Mantasaurus. The villain comments about how he loves dolphin meat, smashing away Matilda the dolphin as the hero blows the villain away with his trident telling his allies that he'll handle this himself. Aquasaurus battles his nemesis amongst the waves, with Black Mantasaurus's spear snapping against Aquasaurus's skin. The hero throws his trident down to his crab friend, knowing that he doesn't need it to defeat the villain, slashing him across the head with his claws as they begin to brutally beat each other. 
In Trimascara, Wonder Don tells her mother that she's been having more visions of a group of heroes, knowing this is the fifth one this week. Wonder Don knows that she has also dreamed of a black monster rising from the ocean to battle a green and gold titan, and small two-legged beasts running for their lives from them. She doesn't know if what she sees are friend or foe, and she is being pulled out from the island by an intense dream. Her mother tells her to follow her, knowing that the dreams represent the turmoil of Earth. She shows her daughter the remains of Ares, a terrible ruler who once lorded over them, and it wasn't until the Dons united together and saved Earth was he defeated. After Ares was defeated, the Dons swore that they would never raise their weapons again, and they are a shining example to the rest of the world, and once again the world is beginning to fall prey to the wars of before. Wonder Don asks that since Ares was defeated, how is this happening again? Her mother says that there are always those who seek to take advantage of peace and evil, and it has many heads, and while the Dons are sworn not to fight, Wonder Don is ready to cut the heads of the Hydra that has risen. She gives her daughter a sword, knowing the visions are a sign that it's her time to forge her own path in the world. Wonder Dawn prepares for her journey, donning her bracelets, shield, and lasso. Her mother knows that something is wrong, so Wonder Dawn reveals that she is scared, but her mother hugs her, knowing fear is in every one of them and there is no way around it, and they have to go through it and roar. Wonder Dawn takes flight towards the mainland, as in Metropolis, Super Saw helps the people erect giant walls around the city. The people crowd around as he returns, letting the children play on his tail as he tells them that he missed them all. He meets with his parents, who are glad to see that he's safe, noting the good haul he has brought them. Supersaur says that they tried, and there was more of the beasts hiding in the jungle now, and he did his best to avoid them. Pa knows that he could have taken them, but the hero knows that he would rather not fight anyone, and he's just trying to find himself. They observe the rocket the hero crash landed in decades before, as his parents remember the day he came, seeing his heart on display as soon as he could walk, and knew that he was there to help this world, not hurt it. Supersaur thanks them for caring for him, as Pa tells him gathering this community together is thankful enough, and he changed this part of the jungle for the better, since he united them and kept them safe. There is suddenly a loud roar, and Supersaur springs into action, telling the people not to leave the city walls, as part of the wall is smashed through by Giganta and Brontazaro, who proclaim the Dark Embryo has called the people to his great purpose, and they are there to collect the human's bones. Mm -hmm.